Hi. <laughs> Don't you love it? Yep. Uh, Hello. Hi, Roberta. I have to look at the break. Oh. I don't see Roberta. Well, are they having that in their building and just they're meeting but distancing? No, they're doing it on Zoom. They do the Kabbalah Shabbat on Zoom. On Zoom, oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's about you know twenty minutes or something right before Shabbat. Uh, mm. Lovely. Hi, <laughs> Meryl. Hi. Hi. Oh, nice oh, to see you, Heidi. Meryl. Hi, Heidi. Hi. Gosh, I, you look great. Thanks. I feel really good. Yay. Hi, Naomi. Welcome. Hi. Oh, hi, Naomi. How lovely. So cool. Hi, Joel. Hi, Joel. Hi, Roberta. Hi, Sherry. Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay. Oh, there's Hank. Yeah, here. It's sort of nice watching people come uh -huh. out. <laughs> yes, yeah. Hi, Hank. And you're like the guy at the door. I know. It's, like it's almost like you're door. letting him in at the door, yeah. huh, Bob? Yeah, I like that. If yeah. only you had a Mishkan to hand to each of them as they came in. <laughs> and a little handout. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Don't forget the handout. Don't hi, forget Susan. The hand. Hi, can you hear me? Hi, oh, hi. Uh -huh. hi, hi. Hi, hi. Hi, Dina. Hi, Lander. Hi, Dina. <laughs> Let's see who's... By the way, I... Uh, David and I participated in uh, recording the music, the Dan Nichols piece for next week oh, with uh -huh. a couple of other members of the of our CBS choir, and we we lip synced. We we did our Millie Vanilli on, uh, <laughs> on Wednesday night, but it's uh, it it was fun to do. It was great oh, to great. sing. Well, that's, that's great. great. So when do we see it? A week from tonight. Oh, okay. Yep. At 7 30. Next Friday. Right. I wonder if the younger members don't get the Millie Vanilli reference. Probably not. Probably <laughs> not. And, and not I'm going to let young. them look it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> Guess what? We were all huge fans of Millie Vanilli. <laughs> Hi, Mark. Hello. Hi, Mark. Hi. Hi, Mark. Oh, uh, I'm just curious. Hi. Who's that? Who's it's me, A B? Me, A B. I don't know. It's me, colon, A B. I don't see it. Oh, I see it down in the left hand corner. Okay. Well, welcome. Yeah. Whoever you are. Hello, it's me. <laughs> Hi, Esther. Hi, Charles. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Mark Cornfield. <laughs> Hi. Yes. I'm really good. Thank you. Wonderful. Oh, that's. Let's see. So thank you. I'm so glad to see hi, Heidi. Oh, we'll just, I can't. We we'll just say hi. Cornfield. <laughs> Oh, I was I said hi to you when you first came on, but you probably didn't hear me. <laughs> well, that's possible. Yeah. Hey, and me or Hello, Verano. Hi, Roberta. Hello, oh, Roberta. Sorry for your loss. Sorry, Roberta. We're thinking of you. You're on mute. There's Mario. Hi, Mario. Hi, Nicholas. Hello. Oh, hi. Hi. Hey. Hey. My name up there. No. <laughs> Robin, are you still driving? Yes. Driving? Where are you now? I'm yes. at the corner of Watt Avenue and El Camino. Okay, it's nice to know. Okay. Who, who is it? It's me at AB. Perhaps you're the Huckleberries. Are you the Huckleberries? No answer. Okay. Well, whoever you are, Mari, I don't know. <laughs> it's fun. It's the secret congregant. Uh huh. Right. It's a guessing game. Mm -hmm. I'm right near the Indian market. 
Okay. Where is that, by the way? Because I'm going to need to go by. It's, um, do you remember where the old vacuum place was? Yes. <laughs> Near the pawn shop? It's right yeah. in that. It's right in that little shopping center. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good to know. Hey, Brett. Hey, looks like Hi, good show. Good show. <clears throat> we're ready, I think. You think we're, are we kind of here? Yeah, I think we're basically here. And I'll let anybody else in that comes. Okay. If anybody, just a quick announcement, if there's anybody here who would like to bake commentation, email me. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Um, happy to see you. For we're gonna first, um, I want to just share a little bit about this special service tonight. So I'm gonna invite all of you to mute, and um, we'll begin. <laughs> I hear Robin in her car. <laughs> Sorry, I, I can't look at my phone. I apologize. No, no, no. We would like you to drive safely. All right. So, Hi. friends, he attends every bris. He attends every havdala. He attends every Seder table. Who is this mysterious presence? None other than Eliyahu Hanavi, Elijah the prophet. We have always loved Elijah in every age and in every land where we have lived. And if you have not known too much about Elijah, you're very fortunate this is your night. Because we will be holding a special Tubishvat Seder in two Sundays at 4 p.m., all free, just zoom on, focusing on the Jews of India and how they celebrate Tubishvat. We have learned that Indian Jews hold a special place in their practice, in their heart, and in their holidays for Elijah. Among Indian Jews, Elijah is most beloved. They hold a celebration called a Melida, where they sing praises about Elijah. And since we are learning about their love of Elijah, our hearts too turn to Elijah. Elijah is known in the Bible. We know him from the book of Kings when he proved that there was one God and he held a fierce contest with the followers of Baal against King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. In the book of Malachi, he tells us that one day before the Messiah comes, all the hearts of parents will turn back to their children and the hearts of children will turn back to their parents. Elijah performed magic in blessing a poor woman by having her jars fill with oil and even brought her child back to life. Even more mysterious is the fact that Elijah ascended in a chariot of fire, but he has never actually died. So in the Bible, Elijah plays three main roles in Jewish life. The first is that he is the forerunner of the Messiah. The second is that he is an arbiter of Jewish law. And the third is that he mediates between parents and children. If the biblical Elijah were not enough, we also have Elijah of Jewish folklore and mysticism. This Eliyahu shows up in the lives of everyday people. He appears in life in clever disguises to help us, to give us hope, to teach us lessons. Until this very day, some Kabbalists solve problems by seeking a revelation called Gilui Eliyahu, an appearance of Elijah that comes in a dream after they have done 40 days of mystical practices. Elijah's name consists of five Hebrew letters, Aleph, Lamed, Yud, He, and Vav, which are the five letters of two names of God. El, which refers to the God of the aspect of God, which is justice, and Yud, He, Vav, He, which is the aspect of God, which is all compassion and love. This too makes Elijah stand out among all other prophets. 
The name Elijah literally means my God is Adonai. As a folk hero, Elijah performs miracles. He heals, he sees who is unselfish, he sees who is selfish. He sees who offers hospitality, who gives charity quietly, who is humble and who deserves help. He will show up as an old man, a poor person, a student, a traveler, a doctor, a robber, a drunkard, a magician, a matchmaker, a farmer, or a horseman. Elijah cannot bear to see injustice and wants to see things set right. Above all, Elijah gives us hope. Tonight's service will be interspersed with images of synagogues from India, as well as synagogues throughout the world that honor Elijah the prophet. So we will hear stories about Elijah, which will then lead us into a, a wonderful learning by Sherry Meyer about the country of India and the Jews of India where Elijah is so honored. So we welcome to all of you and welcome to Eliyahu Hanavi, Elijah the prophet. Rick, you might want to spotlight the um, the text a little bit more and make me smaller. Eliyahu Hanavi, Eliyahu Hatishbi, Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Eliyahu Hagiladi, Bimhera Veyamenu. would like to welcome Diane Renicki to bring in the lights of Shabbat from her home. So Rick, let's spotlight Diane. Okay. After we see the Elijah Hanavi Synagogue of Damascus. Okay. Okay, and so once we see Diane, there she is. Hey, we see it. Okay. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you. Lecha do di li krat kala yala la yala la yala la pene Shabbat ne kavila. Lecha do di li krat kala yala la yala la yala la pene Shabbat. Shabbat <laughs> Yeah. 
sanctuary um, in India, in Kerala, India. And the first story of Elijah the prophet is called The Greeting, as told by Mark Cornfield. Mark, and we're going to, there you go. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. So nice to be here honoring Elijah, the name of my new grandson, Elijah. Uh, it's a perfect name. He will mediate between parents and children, I am sure, <laughs> the rest of his life. Uh, rabbi Meyer of Perem Shalani, the renowned wonder-working rabbi, once told the following story. When I was a young man, I wanted to see Elijah the prophet, whom it is always good to mention. I read everything I could about where he appears and to whom he appears. I recited prayers and read of his adventures out loud, hoping, always hoping that he would appear. I even walked through open fields, looking in every direction and talking to every traveler I met on the way. Maybe this one would be Elijah, perhaps that one. Finally, I talked to my father about my desire to see Elijah and my father answered, if you study Torah with complete devotion, you will become worthy of seeing Elijah the prophet. So I applied myself with my whole heart and soul to my studies. I studied the sacred books day and night for four weeks without stop. At that point, I went to my father and I said, Father, I did what you said I should do. And still, Elijah has not appeared. You assured me that he would. Nargosia, you are so impatient. You is often impatient. But remember, if you desire to see Elijah, then he will appear. Well, one night as I was reading a portion of Torah while sitting in my father's bed midrash, a poor traveler came in. His clothes were dirty and torn with patches on one on top of the other. He was ugly besides, and he was carrying a heavy pack. As he put the pack down, I was disturbed to see that it was only an old beggar with his dusty, dirty things who was bothering me rather than Elijah. This made my anger and annoyance explode and I shouted, hey, take your things away from this place. It's a place of holy study, can't you see that? I'm very tired, replied the traveler. Let me rest a while and then I'll go to find a place to sleep but I would not let him stay and instead told him how my father does not like strangers to come with their dirty packs to stay here. And the traveler left. As soon as he was gone, my father came into the room. No, have you seen Elijah the prophet? He asked. No, 
Not yet. I'm trying to have patience, I replied. So tell me, my son, was anyone here tonight? He asked. Yes, but no one who mattered, just a poor traveler with a heavy pack that was filthy, I answered. And you, my son, did you greet him with Sholo Malechem? Of course not. Such a tramp disturbing my holy thoughts, I said. But why didn't you, my son? Didn't you know that it was Elijah the prophet who came to visit? Now I fear that it is too late, my father told me. So from then on, Rabbi Meyer concluded his story. I always make sure to greet every person I meet with a warm Sholem Aleichem. And I say it with my whole heart, no matter what that person looks like, no matter who that person is, no matter what his or her position may be, no matter their personal preference or whom they may love, Sholem Aleichem. Thank you, Mark. And yes, your uh, precious Eliyahu is delicious beyond words. Ubisman Kari, Vayimeru Ame, Yehishme Rabba Mavora, the Ola Mulome Amayad, Yid Barach, Yid Barach Vishtabach, Vid Far Vitraman Vidna Say, Vietadar Vitale Vitalal, she made a Kurisha, Berichu, Layla Minkovichatavishir Atai. For those of us who are able to stand, we do so. Please be seated. So I can't help but say, um, I guess this is the first Shabbat since January 20th, and there's a lot of change in the air. And let it be said that we thank God for the changes, and we pray that we will all do our parts to make these changes an enduring blessing for our country. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who speaks the evening into being, skillfully opens the gates, thoughtfully alters the time and changes the seasons, and arranges the stars in their heavenly courses according to plan. You are creator of day and night, rolling light away from darkness and darkness from light transforming day into night and distinguishing one from the other. Adonai Tzavaot is your name. Ever-living God, may you reign continually over us into eternity. Baruch atah Adonai, hama'ariv aravim. Blessed are you, Adonai, who brings on evening. Amen. Ahavat olam beit Yisrael Amchavta, Amchavta, Torah u mitzvot, Chukim u mishpatim, Otanu limadita, Otanu limadita, Al kein Adonai Eloheinu v'shoch benu, Uvkumenu nasiach b'chukecha, V'nismach v'nivrei Toratecha, Uvmitzvotecha le'olam v'ahed, Ki hem chayeinu, Ve'orach yameinu, Uvahem negeyom avalaylam, Nagayom of a laila, 
ואהבתך אל תסיר ממנו לעולמים מרוחת אדוני אוהב עמו ישראל אוהב עמו ישראל If you're able and please join me by standing for Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Please be seated. ואהבת את אדוני אלוהיך וכל לבבך וכל נפשך וכל מיודיך והיו הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מצבך היום על לבביך ושיננתם לבניך ודיברת בהם ושבתך בביתך ובלבתך בדרך ובשוך בך ובקומך וקשרתם לאות על ידיך והיו לתותפות בין עיניך וכתבתם המזזו ביתך ובישריך למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותיי ואיתם קדושים לאלוהיכם אני אדוני אלוהיכם אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים להיות לכם לאלוהים אני אדוני אלוהיכם אדוני אלוהיכם אמת אמת So this is another beautiful beautiful image of the Pardesi synagogue in Kerala India and we welcome Elijah's mysterious ways as told by Marcy Merrill Marcy And Rick, you can get rid of me. There you go. You're on, Marcy. We can see you. We can't hear you, but we can Here see we you. Yes. Okay, fantastic. So I'm going to tell you the story about Reb Shmuel Ben Yosef, uh, who loved God. He trusted God. He uh, would have done anything God asked, but he questioned and wondered all the time why good things happen to bad people, why bad things happen to good people, as we all do. And he uh, questioned it so much, and he said to God, I see your miracles, but I am confused. If I only could meet the prophet Elijah, maybe then I could begin to understand and once again, understand and see your daily miracles. Well, now I'm going to have to read you the rest of it because it gets complicated. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Um, so, Reb Shmuel fasted and he prayed and he begged to see Elijah. And one day as he was walking in an open field, a stranger approached him and said, I... I'm Elijah, what would you ask of me? And Reb Shmuel answered, I need to see the wonders that you perform in the world for my world is dark and I do not understand much of what goes on around me. And Elijah said, when you see what I do, you will certainly not understand my actions. Then I will have to explain them to you, which will take time. And uh, Reb Shmuel said, no, no, I promise I will not take up your time or ask you to trouble yourself with me. Reb Shmuel assured him, I will just come along with you to observe, to witness your miracles. That's all. Very well, said Elijah. But remember, if you ask for any explanations, I shall leave at once. Reb Shmuel had no choice but to agree to this condition. He began to walk with Elijah until they came to a small cottage where there lived a poor man and his wife. The couple had very little and owned only one cow, but they received the strangers with a warm welcome. Placing whatever food they had on the table, they invited the two men to sit and to eat. 
All evening they discussed some points of law and the hosts were delighted to have such learned men in their home. In the morning, as they were about to leave, Elijah gave a signal and the cow, this couple's only cow, suddenly died. As Reb Shmuel and Elijah continued on their way, Reb Shmuel muttered to himself in anger, this is some repayment for kindness, that these kind people who welcomed us so graciously to their home should be so repaid. Unable to hold back his deepening confusion, he turned to Elijah and pleaded, why? Why did you cause the cow to die? Elijah kept walking as he replied, have you forgotten what I asked of you? You must not ask for an explanation no matter what I do or else I will leave. Reb Shmuel wanted to argue and ask, but where's the miracle that saves lives or helps the poor? Instead, he said nothing and continued to walk behind Elijah. That evening, they came to a mansion of a wealthy man. They knocked on the door. The master of the house sent his servant to bring the two men to the place where the servant slept. But since they were offered no food, not even a piece of bread, they went to bed hungry. In the morning as they were leaving, Elijah noticed a tree near the house that had been uprooted by a storm. Elijah passed by the tree, nodded, and the tree was returned to its former position with his roots deeper in the ground than before. When Reb Shmuel saw this, he was even more puzzled. He saw such a reward from, did this man deserve a, a reward from Elijah? But he said nothing to Elijah. He hoped he would understand in some way, perhaps some sign or word. All day long they walked until they came to a synagogue in another town. When they entered, they found that the seats were made of gold and silver. The people in, sat in their seats, but no one rushed to welcome them. No one invited them to eat. And that was the custom. After services, they got people, strangers especially, were invited to eat. Since no one asked them to their home for dinner, Elijah and Reb Shmuel remained in the synagogue all night. They slept on the hard benches. The next morning, as Elijah stood by the door, he said to the people, may God make you all leaders. Again, Reb Shmuel did not know what to make of this. The next evening, they stopped at a small community where everyone was extremely poor, but the people welcomed the two travelers, asked them to stay with them, fed them. When they left in the morning, Elijah said to the people, may God bless you with only one leader. Reb Shmuel waited until they were on the road and then he turned to Elijah and cried out, no more, no, no more. I can't continue to see such injustices done. Forgive me, but even though I know you will leave me, please tell me what you have been doing. I do not understand any of this. It appears to me that you're doing the opposite of what the people deserve. And Reb Shmuel wept. Elijah replied, my friend, listen carefully. Do you remember Okay. Here's our conclusion. Do you remember the poor couple whose cow died? The wife was destined to die that very day, so I pleaded with God to accept the cow's death in place of the woman's. When we were at the home of the greedy rich man, I straightened that tree that had fallen over. Had I not done that, the man would have found the hidden treasure that lies in the ground under the tree's roots. While I wish the wealthy but selfish people in the synagogue to have many leaders, that may have sounded like a good thing, but it was a curse because any group that has too many leaders cannot agree on anything and can never make good decisions. Therefore, when I wished for the poor but hospitable community to have only one leader, that was a blessing. For it is said, it is better to have one wise man rule a city than a group of fools. Before Elijah departed, he said to Reb Shmoyle, I want to give you advice that will be useful to you, my friend. Whenever you see a wicked person who is prospering, keep in mind that his trick wickedness will ultimately work against him. And if you see a righteous person enduring hardships, remember that that person is being saved from something worse. Do not doubt these things any longer. One cannot always understand God's ways. Elijah departed and Reb Shmoyle returned to his home, see, see, 
seeing once again the wonders and miracles in the world. And so may we all. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you. And hello to Sandy. So here we have Eliyahu Hanavi Synagogue in Egypt. Mi chamocha vaeli madonai, mi kamocha nedar bakodesh, no rata hilos, ose ose velem. Who is like you? Who is like you? Who is like you, Adonai? When Moses and the children crossed the sea, they sang to you these songs of praise. Who is like you, Adonai? Mi chamocha Adonai. Mi chamocha nedar So we have a beautiful synagogue in Calcutta. Hashkivenu Adonai Eloheinu Lishalom Vahamidenu Makenu Lechayim Hashkivenu Adonai Eloheinu Lishalom Vahamidenu Makenu Hashkivenu Adonai, Eloheinu Lishalom, Vahamidenu Makenu Lechayim. These colors of this synagogue are so beautiful. This is Knesset Eliyahu of Mumbai. Look at those colors. Our third and last reading about Elijah the prophet is called Welcome to Close, as told by Meryl Shader. Meryl, and we'll say goodbye to that beautiful synagogue in one second. There you go. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh -oh. Once it happened at a wedding feast that Elijah arrived dressed like a beggar. Seeing him at the door, the father of the bride ordered him to leave and quickly, or else he would have the servants throw him out. A while later, a handsome man wearing a well-tailored suit, an elegant sable hat, and carrying a cane with a golden handle arrived at the same wedding. The guests all stood up out of respect for this gentleman. They all greeted him with Shalom Aleichem, and the father of the bride said to him, please do us the honor of sitting at the head table with the bride and groom. And they all vied to serve him the finest wine and the best foods. As the guest sat there being served one course after another of the choicest foods, he took each plate and shoved its contents into his pockets, the meat into his right pocket, the potato pudding into the left, the fish into his upper pocket, the carrots into his inner vest pocket. And when he had finished stuffing all the food into the pockets, he poured the fine red wine over it all. The guests stood there amazed with their mouths open wide, not understanding what this strange behavior meant. They certainly had never seen such a ritual before. Finally, with great curiosity, one of them asked for an explanation. Then the guest explained, 
when I came to the door to celebrate the wedding with you dressed as a beggar, you practically threw me out. Then when I came dressed in such elegant clothes, you suddenly rushed over to me to show me, a stranger in your community, such covet. But what, were you, what you were doing was really showing this respect and honor only because of my clothes. As a person, I had not changed from the beggar who first appeared here. I remained the same. But since you showed such respect for my clothes, then why should not the clothes be fed the feast? With that explanation, Elijah laughed. And when the company at the wedding feast looked again at the chair, Eliza was no longer there, but there was something lying across the seat of the armchair, the golden handled cane. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. We're looking for Vishamru. Oh, so here we have at Chesed El Synagogue in Singapore, the chair of Elijah or the Kisa Eliyahu. When uh, traditionally, when there is a bris, uh, there is a kisa Eliyahu, a chair of Elijah, and it's decked out. We make it as beautiful as we possibly can. And uh, when the baby is brought in for a moment, he is symbolically uh, laid on the chair of Elijah before the, the actual bris as a way of showing respect for Elijah and for Elijah to bless this baby. Vishamru vane sahelet a shabbat la sot et a shabbat le dor tamarino la Vishamru vane sahelet a shabbat la sot et a shabbat le dor tamarino la Veni o rein, bene Israel, o ti le olam, o ti le olam. Vishamru, bene Israel, et ha Shabbat, la sot, et ha Shabbat, le dor tamburit olam. Ki sheishit yamim, asar unai, Asa Adonai et Hashemayim ve et Haaretz v'Shamru v'Nei Israel et Hashabbat lasot et Hashabbat l'Dor Tamarit Olam u'Vayom Ashvi Shabbat v'Yinafash Shabbat v'Yinafash Shabbat v'Yinafash. We enter tefillah, if you're able to stand. We take three steps backward and three steps forward as we encounter uh, that place within that we call God. Adonai sifatat yiftach ufi agita hilatecham. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu velohe avutenu vimotenu. Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah, Hail Hagado Hagibur Vahanura, Elohon, Gomel Hasadim Tovim, Vekone Hakol, Vizoche Hastiavot Vimahot. Who <laughs> 
מחלקי חיים בחסד, וחיי מתים ברחמים רבים. סומך נופלים ורופא חולים, ומתיר אסורים, ומקיים אמונתו לשני עפר. מי חמוך אבל גבורות, ומי דומה לך. מלך ממית ומחיה, ומצמיח ישוע, ונאמן אתה לחיות מתים. ברוך אתה אדוני, מחיי המתים. אתה קדוש ושמך קדוש, וקדושים בכל יום ירלו חסלע. ברוך אתה אדוני, האל הקדוש. And Rick, can you remind us what this image is? Maybe not. Ritze Adonai Eloheinu Ve'almechai Yisrael U'tafilatam V'ahava T'hikabel U'tahil ratzon תמיד עבודת ישראל, ישראל עמך. ברוך אתה אדוני, שעודך לבדך בהיר So I haven't been to, I don't believe I've been to the cave of Elijah in Haifa. Rick said that he has, perhaps some of you have. You can see the Hamsa and you can see, I think it's a very small space, probably divided for men and women for prayer. Yisrael Amcha Tassim Tassim Le'olam Shalom Rav A Yisrael Amcha Tassim Tassim Le'olam Ki Yata
two. I've got to find one thing. I just learned this beautiful um, Elna Rafanala that was um, on the Hadassah website. And it was so beautiful that I have to find it. <laughs> but I will make it. Um, I'll find it. Time you can teach everyone the song, Rabbi. I'm about to, I just have to remember the song. <laughs> One second. One second. Ah. Yeah. 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 Now, this El Na Rafanala is a chant uh, composed by a young man um, as he sat with his grandmother, who was very ill. And because it's a chant, I I wanted to. Um, it felt a little bit like Elijah the prophet to me. And I'll do it again, and then we'll read the names and we'll come back to the song. El Na Rafanala. Please, God, bring healing. Oh, God, I beseech you, God, bring healing. Then we will all be strengthened and healed. We send our love to Marcia Cass and Kara Keeley Frampton, Marty Zimmerman, Yossi Bensala, Wendy Phoenix, Raul Savavedra, David Ash, Shlomo Ben Rachel Lea, Martin Gershwitz, Morgan Phoenix, Robin Knuckles, Sky Snyder, Etta Brody, Eugene Macaranis, Carol Hepper, Jarrett Parker, Christina Verano, Mike Polis, and his family is getting better. June St. Gregat, Tony Maynard, residents and staff at Sunrise of Carmichael, Roger Chalop, Elliot Mazur, Sandy Lewin, Victoria, and Peter Ulrich. Victor and Celine and Lisa. Heidi, continue to heal, my friend. Marcus Mathet. Sa'ala bin Khala Aida. Na rafa na la 
So we turn this over to our beloved uh, Sherry, who is going to guide us through some history of Jews of India. And thank you, Sherry. And I know you have your own slides and I can't wait to learn from you. All right, so we're gonna shift gears a little bit. Uh, and part of what I'm so impressed with with all the images that we've seen this evening is what a bounty of Jewish communities we have worldwide. And just as Eliyahu follows us wherever we go, uh, so does the Shekhinah. And each community uh, of the diaspora, sometimes we think of the diaspora as a negative, but each community in the diaspora brings a new language, brings new traditions, brings new melodies to the richness of our experiences. So one of the things that we're trying to do, uh, particularly with Tu B'Shvat, but throughout the year, is to remember that we're not simply Ashkenazic or Sephardim, but that there are other Jewish communities that we are celebrating as well. And so this year, we're celebrating the Jews of India. The beautiful platter that, be, that you see in this image is a Seder platter specifically for a ceremony that we will be enacting uh, for our special Tu B'Shvat service. So I'm, gonna, I'm here tonight just to give you a little forschbite, a little taste, not of that beautiful Seder plate. For that, you have to make your own, um, but of, of the history that is going to be shared with us um, when Rabbi Daniel, Romeo Daniel and his wife Noreen join us. Um, so here's just a little bit about the, the Jews of India um, whose stories we will share on Tu B'Shvat. Like so many of our diaspora communities, there's not just one group of Jews in India. There's a variety of, of beautiful, beautiful uh, communities. Most of them settled either on the West Coast or on the East Coast. We have the Jews of Mumbai um, who were primarily the Vene Israel and I'll talk a little bit about them. We also have the Jews that settled in Calcutta primarily the Baghdadi Jews. And that beautiful image of the woman in the middle of your screen is a Baghdadi Jew. Um, one of the interesting, as I look at, at how beautiful she is, one of the interesting things about Jews in India uh, is that when Indian film began as an industry, neither Muslim nor Hindu women would appear in film but Jewish women would. And so most of the early film stars of Indian Bollywood were actually Jewish women, uh, as exquisite as the lovely lady that you're seeing before you. So um, if you get a chance, there's a wonderful documentary called Shalom Bollywood that you can follow up on. But each of these beautiful images are of a different group, either the Cochin Jews or the B'nai Israel Jews or the Baghdadi Jews, each of whom settled at different times and for different reasons uh, on one or the other coast of India. One of the things that I found really interesting when I taught the course on the Cairo Geniza is how broad 
uh, the travels were of, of our various, of our folks who came out of the Middle East and North Africa as they looked uh, to pursue their trade uh, in spices and in jewels and in all kinds of things. And there's one of the main figures in the Geniza document is a trader by the name of Abraham Banihu. Uh, and Avraham spent about 17 years in Mangalore, uh, India, around or about 1132. And since he spent 17 years there, even though he had a wife and children back in Cairo, uh, he also had a slave woman that he clearly had relations with. Uh, and so before he left India, he issued a deed of manumission. He freed her. And as such, her name was Ashu. And as such, he also invited her to convert fully to Judaism. And so the, the text that you see before you is from her deed of manumission when she was freed and then ultimately they married. And what I love about it is now you belong to yourself and you're permitted to join the community of Israel and to adopt a new name in Israel. And the name that she supposedly adopted was Beracha, was blessing. Um, so this beautiful woman, uh, and again, we often don't think of Jews as having had slaves, but they did frequently domestic. But here was this instance where not only did he become part of a community in India, but when he returned first to Syria and then to Cairo, he brought this beautiful Indian woman with him as a fully freed wife and member of the community of Israel. Another famous trader whose story was not as positive was actually our beautiful sage Rambam own brother, David Ben Maimon, um, had traded back and forth in India. And unfortunately, on one of his trips, uh, he was lost at sea. And, and Rambam grieved for his entire life over the loss of his brother, David, David Ben Maimon, um, who pursued the uh, economic side of the family. <laughs> Today, many of the Cochin Jews um, who settled in, in Malabar, um, they established a, if you will, a much more equitable spiritual relation between the men and the women. They sang in the language of Kerala um, and they, many of them have now left India and, uh, and moved on to Israel and in a little bit, at the end of our service, you'll get to hear that mix of Bollywood and Israeli uh, in our closing song. The synagogue that you see in the lower corner is the, that you've already seen as well is the uh, synagogue in Kochi established in 1568. Um, and Jewtown Road is the neighborhood in which the Jews live, not a ghetto as we think of it, um, but certainly where our community uh, established themselves. Our, our guest speakers are actually part of the B'nai Israel group. Um, they trace their uh, ancestry back to a, a, a group of seven couples, seven families who were shipwrecked on the coast of, of India and believe very deeply that it was Eliyahu who had saved them and made it possible for them to establish themselves in India where they lived very well for many, many years. They eventually uh, moved from the countryside. Um, they were originally known as oil pressers. They, were, they made oil um, and, uh, and were, were farmers very in, uh, involved in agriculture. Um, then much later, they were joined by Jews from Baghdad. And one of the more famous Jews that Jewish families and one of the more well-to-do families were the Sassoon family. And they established the Knesset Eliyahu Synagogue in 1884. So the image that you see of the Knesset Eliyahu Synagogue is 
is dedicated to the Sassoon family. They also established a library and a community center. Um, and that image is of the, uh, of the B'nai Israel um, community uh, from that time as well. So we're going to hear this from Rabbi Romeo Daniel, who is currently a rabbi, as he pointed out to us when we met him the other night, in an Ashkenazi conservative synagogue in Rigo Park, Queens. Um, he was born and raised in Mumbai um, and followed with the B'nai Israel. Um, he came to the United States to study um, at Brandeis. He returned to India, uh, started a company, um, and then returned to the States. He started off as a cantor, um, and we're going to get a chance to hear his beautiful voice. Um, and then he became uh, rabbi of Rigo Park Jewish Center in 2015. So he will, and his lovely wife, Noreen, will actually be joining us for our Tu uh, Seder. Um, we are going, you don't have to take this all down, but Noreen is creating her recipe of the Melita, the sweetened poha. Poha is a flat rice. You can get it either from an Indian uh, store or by the way, Amazon carries it as well. Um, and it is mixed with coconut um, and other, and cardamom. Um, and it's, it, you can tell that they create a mountain of it in the middle of their Seder plate um, to uh, signify Mount Sinai. And around it will be the Tubishvat fruits, the oranges and bananas and dates and pomegranates. We're gonna have this available for you um, to join us to make your own poha, uh, your own Melita Seder plate. Um, and so on January 31st at 4 p.m., we're hoping that you will hear this beautiful ceremony with its blessings. And by the way, the B'nai Israel do the Melita ceremony, not just for Tu B'Shvat, but for all very important occasions, for a bris, uh, for a wedding, because again, it's their opportunity to celebrate Eliyahu Hanavi and to thank him for those seven couples who survived the shipwreck and who founded their community. So thank you. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much, Sherry. That was so interesting. And for all of you who are on the fortunate enough to um, be with us tonight, please, 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 let's let's go to India, okay? <laughs> let's go. Let's. Uh, but at the minimum, though, let's join together for that Melida for the Tubishvat Seder, and keep looking around for Eliyahu Hanavi. I would like to invite Bob to uh, share with us what's up, and um, thank you for that. Bob? Okay, the announcements this week. We have Torah study tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. And then Sunday morning is the Neshama Education Program at 9 a.m. And Purim rehearsal at 1 o'clock on Sunday. We're continuing the Tuesday morning coffee with the rabbi at 9 o'clock. And one Tuesday a month, we're doing a special event about what the response of the Jewish response says about different issues. And the one for this coming Tuesday is end of life choices and what Jewish tradition and responses says about that. Tuesday the 28th, the last day to drop off clothing for the Weave Clothing Drive. And Carl, our custodian, is going to be at the synagogue between 11 and 1 on Thursday the 28th. So the two special events coming up that I'd like to get on our calendars. Next Friday is our worship. Shabbat Shirah with B'nai Israel, so the two synagogues working together, and it's going to be at 7.30, and a very special service with Dan Nichols, who's a nationally known Jewish uh, singer, artist, and we will have a special link to that service, and the office will be sending that link out on that Friday, so it'll be a little bit different. Uh, it's a webinar. We will all observe it. We won't be participating 
but we'll have a link to the key is it's at 730 and very special. Some of our choir members have been practicing to be part of that too. And then the wonderful Tubishvat Seder is going to be Sunday, the 31st at four o'clock. So there's more on the website and there'll be more uh, emails coming about that. I would really encourage all of us to be part of the sharing so time and energy with our committee. And it's just going to be an awesome, awesome event. The Purim fundraiser is starting this week. You saw an email come that you can order Hamantaschen and the proceeds uh, support our religious practices committee. Our monthly board meeting is going to be a week from next Tuesday on February 2nd. And adult Hebrew is starting again on Thursday, the February 11th at 7.30. So you can register for that. Thank you all for being here tonight and being part of a wonderful service. Thank you, Bob. Thank you very much. And we will continue now with uh, Alenu, followed by our Kaddish prayer, followed by Motsi. Um, Ale, if you're able to stand, please do. Aleinu l'shabach l'adon ha'kol l'atit k'dul al-yotzeh b'reshit sh'loas sh... I'm looking at the text, it's not the one we usually do. Sh'hu samcha k'nu l'yached et sh'mo v'gor aleinu l'an l'chmachu tov v'anachnu k'orim u'mishtachavim u'modim l'ifne melech machhe ha'mlachim ha'kadosh baruch hu Shahuna Teshamay in Vyosen Arabs, who Moshe Vikaro Bashamay and Mimaal, who shree not to so, who shree not to so, the Gov Hemeromim, who Eloheinu Ainod, and the Makenu Ephesulato, Kakatu, the Torah to Vyadatayam, the Hashivota, Eleva Vecha. Ki Adonai hu Elohim ba shamayim mi ma'al ve'al ha'aretz ve'al ha'aretz mi hitachat ehenod v'ne'emar v'haya Adonai l'melech ha'kol ha'aretz v'yom ha'hu v'yom ha'hu yeh Adonai echad u'shema Please be seated. And Rick, um, we remember, and for all of us, we remember those who have passed within the 11 months. We remember Gloria Dotti, Jerome Marvin Hyman, Ivan Krakowski, Michael Salman, Frank Ketchell, Patrick Ashley, David Stern, Tanja White, Tommy Raskin, Alfred Laniado, Beatrice Massad, Dean Myrtle, Alberto Arab Cohen, Kathy Klein, Samuel Alberto Apasoa, Herb Glassman, Lori Malkin Zidel, Bella Berkovich, Brian Ginsburg, Rebecca Yabif Segura de Apasoa, Gerard Rosenberg, Stephen Henry McCoy. Stephen Lander. And we remember the yard sites that fall at this time. Abe Berman, Milton Block, Morton Glazer, Bella Kaplan, Phyllis Kaufman, Evelyn Renee Kane, Edith Lazare, Faye Lewin, Shirley Seeve, Ed Seeve. Al Malkin, Joseph Meyer, Shizu Najima, 
Molly Osias, Phil Rosenberg, David Parks, Ruth Sanders, Dr. Dorothy Sexter, Margaret Warner, Paul Young. We include in our prayers all those who have died from COVID in our country and throughout this world. Zichronam Levracha, may all their memories be for a blessing. If you're able to stand, please join me. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei Rabba. Bialma divrachirate viam lich machute. Bahaihon of Yomehon of Hayedho Beit Israel. Bagalav Zman Karivi Mru Amen. Yeheshme Rabba Mavarach Lelam Ulame Amaya. Yit Barach Vish Tabach Vit Paar Vit Raman Vit Nase. Vietadar Vitalevi Talal Shemed Kudisha Brihu. La Elam in Kobir Hatavishirata. Tushbachata v'nechemata da amiran v'alma v'imru amen. Yehei shlama rabba min shemayim v'chayim aleinu v'yakol Yisrael v'imru amen. Ose shalom b'mu'amav. Huya ose shalom. Aleinu v'yakol Yisrael v'yakol yoshvei tevel v'imru amen. So at this point, my friends, I, uh, we will offer Kiddush together. I'm not sure if um, the Huckleberries are on and if they're, can you tell if they're there? Rick, can you see if the Huckleberries? Yes, I see them. Huckleberries, are you up for helping us with Kiddush tonight? I can't tell. Well, while you're thinking about it, can everybody get a glass of something that it's a beverage of their choice? Rick, yes or no? Um, not sure. Yeah, not sure. All right, next time. L'chaim, everybody. Beverage of choice, let us bless. Baruch atadonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, Borei pariah gafen. Baruch atadonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, Asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav v'ratzavahanu, V'shabbat kosho v'yavav ratzon himchilanu, Zikara l'mahasev v'reishit, Ki hu yom t'chila l'mikrae kodesh, Zechel tziyat mitzrayim, Ki vanu v'charta, Vyotanu kidashta mikohamim veshavahat kodshecha veahava uvratzon hinchaltanu baruch ata Adonai mekadesh hashavat l'chaim everyone l'chaim and Holly dear. Will you will you lead us in a blessing for Fred? Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam hamotzi lechem in haaretz. Amen. That looks beautiful. I know you made it. I did. Yeah. What is it? It's just a um, kind of a long a levan a levan. Kind Everything of. you make is so wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> so <Taste>. I, <laughs> I'd love to taste that. I want to thank Sherry so much for your teaching. I want to thank all our storytellers. Um, and I want to thank uh, Rick so much for bringing in all these images and Marcy for sharing images when you were in, when India. So thank you all so much for being here. And we're going to go out Sherry, you're going to give us a song. This is a, a song that um, it takes place in the Shuk in Jerusalem. And it's a wonderful opportunity to see the energy of India, spirit, and Israel. You're on mute, Sherry. Okay. Thank you.
So Liara Etak uh, is a pop star uh, from the Cochin um, uh, folks uh, in India, and she speaks quite lovingly of bringing together her Israeli and her Indian side. So this should get you up and moving um, and is, is just fun. All right. <laughs> I love the Israeli cop getting into yeah. it. <laughs> that was fun. All right, you guys. He was real. Have a beautiful Shabbat. Be safe. Thank you. Shabbat. I want to hear it again. Home, everyone. <laughs> In the morning, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom.